principles of paving. Tarmac are involved in all aspects of the construction industry and are the largest producer of surfacing materials in the UK. We continue to set the benchmark for material production and surfacing operations in the industry. This film provides an end-to-end -end overview of what is involved in creating a quality road surface and the critical steps needed to mitigate poor ride quality, load ends and joint failure. It is important that site teams, paving crews and delivery drivers all understand their roles in delivering the best quality surfacing for our customers. The perfect pavement requires an effective supply chain that can be split into the following aspects. Manufacture and transport of the material, site access, plane and bond coat, paving best practice. Manufacture and transport of material. The key to quality of the materials we use is the way asphalt is mixed, stored and then delivered to site. Unnecessary delays reduce the quality of the material and therefore affect the overall ride quality and finish of the road surface. When asphalt is manufactured, the storing of the mixed asphalt at the plant should be minimised, especially surface coarse materials. It is generally accepted that base and binder mixes can be mixed in advance and stored. However, the time in storage should be limited to a calculated bin storage time for each specific material. Storage of surface coarse materials, in particular ulti products and polymer modified mixes, should be avoided. Storage is also the responsibility of the delivery driver, as time on the delivery vehicle has the biggest impact on the quality of the asphalt. Maximum journey times to site should be agreed and set for certain high specification products and all unnecessary delays should be managed out of the delivery process. For example, drivers should not load up their vehicles knowing that they have a brake coming up. Attention should be paid as to how the material is loaded into the delivery vehicle. The load should be inspected for any obvious visual quality issues such as uncoated materials or excessive binder. If any potential quality issues are identified, the load should not be dispatched without further inspection. During daily checks of the vehicle, all aspects that could affect insulation level should be inspected. This includes the easy sheet, as windshield through any gaps will seriously affect the material and directly affect the finish quality. Substandard material is one of the biggest causes of poor finish and ride quality. These are examples of typical poor surface finishes as a result of poor quality materials and paving. Poor joints, poor compaction. Fatty materials, too much bitumen. Visible load ends due to loss of forward motion when paving, often caused by cold material that is worse during winter working. Before leaving the production unit, the delivery driver should be aware of the delivery instructions including specific details of haulage routes, access points and site conditions. Drivers must listen and adhere to the instructions and guidance given by the Weybridge and on the delivery map. Site rules will often include the location of a holding area or position within the site that minimises reversing when engaging with the paver, particularly when tonnage markers are being used. Site access and site rules on some projects, the first interaction may be from a gateman in a holding area or airlock. Vehicles should prepare to tip by adjusting the mud flaps and tailboard to avoid any stoppages to paving. All vehicles must comply with Tarmac's 5 plus 2 rule, where drivers must always make eye contact and give a thumbs up when passing site operatives or other activities. Without eye contact, vehicles must not proceed. Plane and bond coat the planing operation is a critical part of any surfacing project, particularly when replacing surface coarse materials. The accuracy and quality of the plane surface affects the quality of the finished surface. The plane surface must be as smooth as possible to mitigate the risk of aggregate drag as this will affect the finish and ride quality. Utilisation of the level control functionality of the planer will ensure an evenly planed surface. The level Depth of the plane surface should be checked at regular intervals to ensure accuracy and to allow adjustments to be made where necessary. The speed of the planer and the tool spacing also have an impact on the plane surface. The rule of thumb is the slower the planer speed, 
and closer the tool spacing, the better the result. Using bond coat to ensure bonding between layers is essential to ensure performance of the pavement. The site team will minimise trafficking of the bond coat and wherever possible the site team will ensure that the applied bond coat has broken before allowing delivery vehicles to run on the surface. Trafficking of unbroken bond coat causes stripping which can have an adverse effect on the long term performance of the new surface as well as potentially causing a safety issue with tyres and deposit on the carriageway. Paving best practice A high quality finish is delivered by using high quality, well maintained machinery. Before work starts, the paving machine must be set up correctly. It is important to carry out the pre-use inspection and check the oil and fluid levels to ensure optimal performance. It is vital that enough time is allowed to ensure the screed has reached the required temperature and is set to the correct profile, extensions and tamper speed settings. The banksman is the link between the paving machine and the delivery vehicle. They will be identified bespoke PPE. The driver must be aware of who the designated banksman is prior to any site movement or tipping. The risk of reversing incidents is increased during night working due to factors including reduced visibility, artificial lighting and high levels of background noise. Each driver will be directed verbally and with recognised hand signals to reverse onto the paving machine hopper by the banksman. At night, a red, green torch or wand will be used as a visual aid to control the movement of vehicles reversing onto the paving machine. During paving, instructions will be given clearly by the banksman to the driver such as one tip, drop down, pull forward 10 metres. This is in order to produce a constant flow of material through the paving machine, prevent overloading of the paver and ensure the vehicle disengages smoothly without leaving a pile of material in front of the paving machine. It is important that drivers understand these directions. If in doubt, stop and ask. Steady flow, unnecessary braking and a maintaining the correct position are all key to successful delivery. These can all be influenced by site conditions, such as the presence of overhead obstacles, inclines, curvature of the road and ground conditions. It is Tarmac's policy, flat before you sign, that the delivery ticket, either paper or electronic, is not signed until the body of the delivery vehicle is lowered. The best results are obtained when the laying operation is carried out in a smooth, continuous process. Each time the paver stops, a slight undulation will be left in the mat. Through good site organisation, we aim to provide a smooth transition for discharging the next vehicle and keeping the paving machine moving. When undertaking continuous paving, during the transition between loads, the paving machine will slow its speed to a crawl. Using the material stored within the pan to allow forward motion to be maintained whilst the transition occurs. The next delivery vehicle should be suitably positioned and prepared to tip without hindering the progress of the paving train. Close coordination between the paving team and delivery drivers is essential. Each driver will generally be picked up within close proximity to the paver. It is important that the paver picks up the delivery vehicle rather than the vehicle bumping the paver during engagement particularly when laying surface coarse materials, as this will minimise the risk of load end scarring on the material or visible ridges in the completed mat. All these factors will impact on the final ride quality. The paving crew are ultimately responsible for the finished product, and as such all operatives within the gang are trained and experienced in each of the skills required to place the materials to a high standard. With a wheeled paver, it is important to maintain a low and constant head of material to prevent the paver from losing traction. Variations in the head of material can create movement of the screed and therefore irregularities can appear in the laid surface. Auger extensions are used to convey the material evenly in front of the screed with the use of auger sensors to control the flow. It is a rule of thumb to cover between half to two thirds of the augers with material. Overfilling of the screed should be avoided, as it can result in screed lift. If the speed of paving is increased without simultaneously increasing the tamper speed, the screed will drop and therefore the depth of the material laid will drop as well. This will lead to inconsistent levels. When the roller passes over the newly laid mat, 
the varying amounts of pre-compaction will result in irregularities of the surface. When laying to tight level tolerances, a more robust method of control must be adopted. It may be a requirement to fit the machines with an averaging beam. This has the effect of averaging any differences in level over a longer, linear distance to create a smoother finish of the surfacing material. To lay to the correct thickness of material, it is important to leave a surcharge that when compacted will leave the material at the correct nominal depth. In most circumstances, the first pass of the roller should always be to trap the joint. This is achieved by the majority of the roller drum being placed on the adjacent mat. It is best practice to have no more than 200 to 300 millimeters of the roller drum on the newly laid material. This ensures no level differential between the mats is present after compaction. If this procedure is not followed, it can result in a linear step between lanes, or an area of poorly compacted material that will result in early joint failure. Both temperature and wind speed can impact on the rolling process and need to be considered by the site team as part of the laying process. The distance between the paver and the roller should be minimised to remove the risk of cooling prior to compaction. Following trapping of the joint, best practice rolling patterns require compaction by overlapping every pass by half the width of the roller drum for each subsequent pass, ideally working from the low side to the high side. Changes of direction should ideally be at very low speed. The material should be compacted as soon as possible and within the temperature constraints defined in the specification. All materials should be compacted until there is no further displacement and all lines have been rolled out. Experience has shown that failure to follow the principles of paving can have a detrimental effect on the overall quality and ride of a pavement. We hope this film has enabled you to recognise how your contribution to all elements of our safe surfacing operations impact on the finished product and provide our customers with the high standards they expect from Tarmac.